here we go. Wow. Hey guys, it's Joanna, Naturally Motivated Lady. Today's video is going to be a bit different than my regular natural hair videos. Nonetheless, I think you'll really enjoy this video because Yosemite National Park is a place I think everyone should experience at least once in their life. My husband and I just returned from vacation hiking in Yosemite. Uh, we flew from Florida out to California for this trip and words cannot explain how absolutely magnificent this experience was. I was astonished by the beauty of the mountains, the lakes, the meadows, the waterfalls, just everything. So if you'd like to see some beautiful scenery and find out the top tips I would give to hikers or sightseers headed to Yosemite for the first time, then definitely keep watching. Oh, and also don't forget to hit like and also maybe even hit that subscribe button. And if you have any additional tips or anything to add, definitely leave that down in the comments below. I'll start by sharing how we routed out our trip and things we did to make the best out of our Yosemite visit. Okay, so we booked a hotel near the south entrance of Yosemite National Park so that we could stay for five days and four nights. So tip number one is to be sure to plan out which season you'll be visiting, spring, summer, winter, fall, and book your hotel as soon as possible, more than six months out if you can. Because waiting too long could result in not being able to stay in the hotel that you would like to stay in or paying a significantly increased price for the few rooms that are still available. And on our travel days, we did random stuff around the Oakhurst area and we spent three full days hiking and sightseeing in different areas of the park. Now, the first day we left our hotel room very early around 6.15 or 6.30 a.m. and took Wawona Road, I believe it's called. Yes, Wawona Road to Yosemite Valley. And here's a clip of when we're entering into the tunnel. So tip number two is to start your day early. For instance, if you like to get in the park around 7.30 or 8 a.m. and you need to drive, let's say, an hour or an hour and a half to get to the park, maybe leave around 6 a.m. so that you have time for that. It's also helpful to check traffic updates. And if you visit during the busy season, especially June, July, and August, plan on arriving really early to the trailhead of the trail that you plan to hike. Otherwise, you may have a hard time finding somewhere to park during the busy season. Fortunately for my husband and I, traffic was not too bad during this fourth week of August. So we then started off with a very easy hike up to Bridal Veil Falls. Bridal Veil is easily accessible and it's a year round waterfall, so it's not all dried up if you visit in the fall or winter. Our next stop was El Capitan or El Capitan. And then we did some hiking through the valley of El Capitan. It was very beautiful and very, very peaceful, uh, but please do not wander off the trail on this hike. 
So tip number three is to stay on the established trails and not just for your own safety, but also so that you don't damage any of the plants, the flowers, the trees, and so forth. Respect the park. Then we drove and parked just north of Yosemite Chapel and hiked north across to lower Yosemite Falls. Now, depending on what time of year you visit, the waterfalls can be very powerful during springtime when the snow is melting and it can be more tranquil in late summer or just down to a trickle in fall. We stopped in for a quick bite to eat at, I believe it's called Yosemite Valley Lodge, but it's a good place to stop and take a break if you need to catch a shuttle to get somewhere, you can do that, or you can continue hiking like we did. However, we did not overexert ourselves on the first day. So tip number four is to pace yourself. If you're new to hiking, please don't overdo it on the first day because then the rest of your hiking trip may not be so pleasant if your knees or feet are hurting. Day two started with a road trip to the Taft Point Trailhead. And by the way, many of the trailheads do have restrooms. You guys, this was one of the most exciting parts of the trip for me because the trail to Taft Point was maybe easy to moderate, but the reward at the end of the hike was just absolutely amazing. Here's some footage. Okay, hey guys, it's Joanna. This is probably as high as I've ever been in my life. This view is just breathtaking. It's so amazing. Fortunately, there is a little rail on this part, otherwise I wouldn't be so close to the edge. But this is absolutely amazing, just gorgeous. Sorry if I'm breathing a little hard. We just did a long hike to get up here, so I guess it wasn't too bad, but wow. Also the elevation. All right. Joanna, this is an awesome point. It just looks like you scaled this mountain. That's what it looks like right now. And Taft Point is a great beginner hike. It has some change in elevation and some pretty rocky areas, but it's only about maybe a total of 2.2 miles. And I felt on top of the world when I made it to the top. <laughs> At 7,500 feet elevation, it was definitely the highest point or highest I had ever been on foot. Uh, it's especially high in comparison to where I live in Florida where it's like an elevation of 80, less than 100. Now while driving from place to place, you will want to pull over and stop. Uh, one of those places on the Glacier Point Road was Washburn Point. quite interesting driving through these mountains, driving up here. Um, it's a little bit scary, but so far so good. And I gave my husband a break today, so I'm doing the driving. The funny thing is that we, uh, we requested a five-person vehicle, but they said that they were out of them and gave us a seven-person uh, SUV. So we have this huge vehicle that I'm having to drive around these mountains. So tip number five is to allow time for stopping along the way to sightsee. 
Also, to pull over and let other cars pass if you're a slow driver on those somewhat scary mountain roads, but that's just my opinion. Another stop you don't want to miss is Glacier Point. It's a relatively short hike to get there, and it offers breathtaking views of Yosemite Valley, uh, of Half Dome, and Yosemite's high country. And it also has a nice little uh, snack hut with decent prices. So if you want to grab some ice cream or a cold drink, then you can do that there. So my husband and I decided to spend the latter part of day two at Mariposa Grove. Uh, we learned a ton of information about giant sequoias, and these trees are the largest living things on earth, nearly 3,000 years old. And this was the only guided tour that we took. There is a very nice park ranger who shared all sorts of facts about these beautiful trees, and he guided us as far as the grizzly giant, which is one of the largest giant sequoias in the world. Then we decided to hike further on the trail without the ranger, and here's a few pics of that. But tip number six is to grab a copy of the guide when you enter into the park. Um, they will give you a Yosemite guide that shows you the schedule of all the different activities. That way, if you would like to do a guided tour, you can check ahead of time to find out the place and the time of the tour. So we started day three a little later, not leaving our hotel room until probably around 8 a.m. You guys, Tioga Road or the Tioga Pass is not for the faint of heart. It's a mountain pass in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California at nearly 10,000 feet elevation. It's a beautiful scenic drive past forests, meadows, lakes, granite domes, but it definitely has a lot of winding, narrow roads with very steep cliffs with no guardrails throughout most of the highway. So if you're not an experienced driver, or if you're a new driver, or if you're really afraid of heights, you may not want to drive Tioga Pass. Maybe have someone else drive you or use the shuttle. And if you do drive it, please take it easy and use caution. But hands down, Tioga Pass has the most beautiful scenery that I've ever seen on a highway. So tip number seven, which is my main tip regarding Tioga Pass, is to make sure that the road is actually open for the time that you plan to visit. The weather actually affects when this road opens and closes, so it's not always predictable. Tioga Pass is typically open around May or June and usually closes sometime in November after the first snowfall. So definitely check first. One stop that we made along this road was Olmstead Point. Another must see is Tenaya Lake. And another one of my favorite hikes was that of Tuolumne Meadows, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it. Again, we saw more wildlife and breathtaking views in every direction. We've encountered quite a bit of wildlife. 
while we've been here in Yosemite National Park. And once again, we've encountered another deer. Yes, she's very beautiful. But yes, they don't seem to be very fearful, probably because they're not hunted here in the park. <laughs> So we ended the day with driving down as far as Mono Pass. So I pretty much drove the entire Tioga Pass, which was a pretty cool experience. Tip number eight, the park is huge. So plan out where you want to go before going. Do you wanna go down into Yosemite Valley or perhaps you want to go south of the valley to visit maybe Taft Point or Mariposa Grove? Or maybe you'd like to go north of the valley and drive up to Tioga Pass and visit all the beautiful sites there like Tenaya Lake and Tuolumne Meadows. But it's best to plan out your route and plan which hikes you'd like to take so that you can make the most out of your time there at the park. But this was an absolutely amazing trip and I would definitely love to go back. Tip number nine is that if you're going to go hiking on any of these trails, please wear hiking boots and wear them in well before your trip because you really don't want to end up with sore feet or a sprained ankle or something worse from tripping over or twisting your foot on a rock. So as a final tip for today, tip number 10, have fun and be safe. I experienced nature in a way that I had never experienced before. So enjoy all of these special moments and really take them in. And if you're visiting during a really busy time, maybe walk a little further onto the trail and find a secluded place where you can just really um, enjoy your surroundings. And remember, a cool photo is not worth your life. We saw people sitting and standing on the literal edge of cliffs just for a photo. Just don't do it, it's not worth it. The same thing for rivers. Don't get too close or step into a river that feeds into a waterfall. It's common sense. Just Respect the park, respect nature, and enjoy your experience. And this is not an all-inclusive list. So if you have tips for first-time hikers or for those visiting Yosemite, please comment below so that we can help each other out and so that we can all have amazing experiences in this beautiful park. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, definitely hit the like button or even subscribe. And I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.